Hello, and welcome to the Mastin Kip Podcast. I'm your host, Mastin Kip, and I am the creator of Functional Life Coaching, where we discover the root cause emotional blocks that are holding you back from success. And I'm also the creator of Trauma Hacking, helping you turning your nervous system into your ally, and the best selling author of the book, Claim Your Power, and also a trauma survivor advocate. And this podcast is from my heart to yours. I'm going to share with you all kinds of different things, uh, different coaching uh, experiences that I've had with people, um, different parts of my life, maybe an excerpt from a seminar, different interviews with friends and thought leaders, all about how to get unstuck, how to hack your nervous system, how to turn your nervous system into your ally and really get the edge so you can really live your dreams, uh, live your purpose, and most importantly, pay it forward. So I hope you enjoy today's episode. One favor I have for you is this. If you love this podcast, remember to subscribe to it. And if you feel called, please feel free to leave a review because reviews really matter, helps us spread the word and helps other people really discover this podcast. So if this was valuable to you, please feel free to leave a review and subscribe to the podcast. And if there's anything in this episode or any episode that really strikes you as an aha moment, shoot us an email to hello at mastinkip.com. Tell us which episode it was and about what time, uh, the breakthrough was in the episode so that we can really know because I'd love to hear from you what your aha moments are. I love hearing that and my team loves hearing that too. So without any further ado, please enjoy this episode of the Mass and Kip podcast. Hey there, this is Mass and Kip and welcome to the Mass and Kip podcast. And today I want to talk to you about a topic that's near and dear to my heart. I have been posting a lot of my leading edge thoughts about trauma, mental health, uh, purpose, um, how you can really heal in a holistic way so that you can you know, do purposeful work, do your best work, um, really truly have high performance, have peace, less stress, getting more done, more love, more relationships. And all that boils down to sort of trauma work and internal work. And I've been really posting those thoughts um, that I'm having over on Instagram. And there have been some posts I've been doing that, um, you know, they have a few hundred words in the caption, but I thought, you know, recording some podcasts would be cool because I could have a little bit of an expanded conversation with you about some of my thoughts. There have been a lot of incredible responses to sort of my view on mental health and emotional health and physical health and how that relates to things like, you know, being successful in business and purpose and relationships and all that jazz. And so I want to just opine here a little bit on the podcast and uh, talk to you uh, more about these ideas at a deeper level. So back on August 12th of 2018 uh, was really the first post I put up. And uh, the post says, you are perfectly made. And then above that, it says disorder crossed out. And below it, it says a response. And the main idea with this post is that, especially in Western medicine, we have what's called an infectious disease model. So what does an infectious disease model mean? Well, what that means is, is that, you know, we are in this place of trying to cure infectious diseases. So, you know, when we first had antibiotics, you know, we were curing diseases that would kill people right away, like the plague and, you know, stuff like that. And if you think about when you get the cold or a flu, you know, you go get some medicine and you take it and then the symptoms go away. Or maybe you get an infection and you take some antibiotics and um, then the infection goes away, right? So that's sort of an infectious disease model. And the problem is that when we started to create infectious disease cures uh, a while back, we didn't know it, but something like, for example, an antibiotic, when it goes into your gut, when it goes into your gut microbiome and your GI tract, it doesn't just kill the good bacteria or the bad bacteria, it kills the good bacteria. So it's not um, what we thought it was. It's sort of like a nuclear bomb going off. So if you were going to drop a nuclear bomb, it's very different than a surgical strike. And so while, you know, obviously, you know, uh, antibiotics have saved, you know, literally billions of lives, and it's highly likely that you and I wouldn't be alive today without uh, antibiotics and infectious disease cures. The problem is, is that in the, the process of starting to cure, essentially, infectious disease, we ushered in an era of chronic disease. We ushered in an era of chronic conditions. And this has both an effect on the body, the brain, and our emotional states. And it's sort of this trinity of body, mind, and emotions that, you know, kind of cause chronic conditions, whether it's, you know, obesity or, you know, diabetes or, you know, any of the itises or osises, and certainly a lot of the mental health issues that we have. Now, know that I'm not a doctor, I'm a college dropout, but I am obsessed with research 
and I take all the cutting edge research, I apply it to my our high end clients and our ProsperX program and our other coaching programs, and I see results. And so I'm actually in many ways, I won't say more qualified, but definitely have a different perspective on the latest research because I don't live in a lab or a research facility. I work with real clients in the real world and take these ideas and concepts and we apply them and we see what happens in the real world, which is always so different than in the research lab. And one of the biggest things I've seen out there as I've you know done some deep, deep, deep research into the gut microbiome, genomics, which is you know sort of the you know the totality of all the genes in your body, both microbial genes and then human genes, um, you know, studying emotional trauma, trauma responses, understanding the brain. Um, what I'm starting to understand and really see in, in functional medicine is that there really isn't anything wrong with you. And this post about you're perfectly made, what that means is, is that essentially my assumption and sort of the conclusion I've come to is that everything that's happening, whether you have a chronic illness, a mental health um, condition, whatever it might be, is that there's actually not a pathology there. Now, what does that mean? A pathology is what's wrong. So if they were going to give you a certain diagnosis of maybe you know PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, well, what if it was post-traumatic stress response? What would that be a response to? Well, obviously trauma. And there's lots of different types of trauma. There's childhood development trauma that happens when we're growing up. There's relational trauma that happens in relationship, either with our family of origin or our loved ones where, you know, our needs are neglected or we're abused. And it doesn't have to be extreme stuff. You know, uh, I grew up in a family where my mom had a broken back and um, the focus was primarily on taking care of her. And because we focused on taking care of her, unintentionally, my emotional needs were neglected. So I have a, a version of relational trauma, if you will, that I cope with. And, you know, my core wound is around abandonment and are my needs going to get met? And I had great parents and I grew up in a privileged uh, household uh, with more money than most people grew up with and as a white man. So trauma and these things doesn't have to just be this really intense sort of you know, abuse or, you know, molestation or the physical violence. Those things certainly are traumatizing, but you can have other levels of trauma too. There's relational trauma. There's certainly abuse. There is uh, molestation. There is... Uh, you know, emotional abuse, narcissistic abuse. There's lots of different types of things that traumatize us. Relationships, divorce, grade school, um, the news these days, the polarization of the right and the left um, and the people who want to make progress and the people who are scared of the progress. There's so many things that are happening today. And what's interesting to understand is that these things are all responses to trauma. Now, one of the things I was surprised to see is that as I started to roll out this philosophy, there was this misconception that when you talk about somebody having trauma, that it excuses or makes right the behavior, or somehow it turns the person who was a perpetrator into a victim, and it sort of invalidates um, someone who was hurt or victimized by somebody. And that's not really the point of this. The point of this is to understand is that we all have trauma, and that someone who's hurt will hurt somebody else. Someone who's traumatized traumatizes other people. And so we're not justifying or making right the um, you know, inexcusable behavior of other people, but you can't really change something unless you understand how it works and how it functions. And so this idea is to help you understand yourself more and also the world around you more. So I could say something like, you know, so-and-so physically abused somebody else. And the physical abuse was absolutely traumatizing and can almost guarantee you the person who was the perpetrator of the physical abuse had trauma too. Now, does me saying that the person who perpetrated physical abuse have trauma justify their behavior? No, not at all, not one bit. But we have to start to understand that this is a multi-layered issue. There's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very, very, very uh, complicated issue because we all have different levels of trauma. And so we have to, on the one level, address the values, which is, you know, abuse should not exist. Racism, misogyny should not exist. Those values and behaviors are inexcusable. And if we all really want these things to go away, what we've got to learn how to do is address the underlying trauma together. And that's going to require um, your own healing and it's going to require um, compassion, uh, which are, you know, compassion is a principle that Jesus and Buddha and all the great spiritual teachers talk about. This is the time to really understand uh, have self-compassion and compassion for others. You know, Martin Luther King said in the 50s that we have to love our enemies not because we have to, but because God loves them too. And it doesn't mean that we have to like them. Now, in terms of, you know, chronic conditions and mental health issues, 
when you look at you know, an otis, an osis, an otis, an osis or an itis, you know, arthritis, arthritis is an example is inflammation of a certain joint. And the inflammation of, well, there's, infl- there's an inflammatory response happening in the body. <clears throat> so if you think about it, you know, inflammation usually doesn't happen on its own. There's a lifestyle choice, a food choice, a, a, some type of reaction happening because of um, a toxin in the body. And so the arthritis or the osis is an appropriate response to that underlying pattern. And so your, the arthritis or the osis or any of the chronic conditions is really just your body trying to cope best with what's happening. So it's actually not a bad or wrong response. It's an appropriate response. And you could say the same thing about you know something like PTSD. Instead of post-traumatic stress disorder, it's there's nothing disordered about it. It's a post-traumatic stress response. So what that means is, is that there's a trauma that you went through and the PTS quote D that you're experiencing, well, that's an appropriate response to the trauma that you went through. You know, if you were, you know, in uh, the military and you saw combat first, thank you for your service. But of course there might be PTS R, not because there is a response to that trauma. And so if we just medicate the symptoms only, we're never really going to actually fix the problem. And this is why the current belief system is in the mental health uh, field, there may or may not be a cure for like narcissistic personality disorder or OCD or PTSD. And the reason why that's the current level of thinking is because it's really only at a symptom level. We're not really looking at the root cause trauma, the childhood development trauma, you know, the type of uh, uh, emotional makeup somebody had going into a traumatizing event because what we're learning about trauma is it's never really the traumatizing event that matters. It's how you hold it and cope with it later. Do you isolate with it? Do you create pain with it? Or do you share it and do you heal it? And how much re- emotional and physical resilience do you have going into a situation like that first? And so it's important to understand that we're not justifying everything and we're not saying you should stop medication, but we are saying just like in functional medicine, you want to address the symptoms and that might be with prescription medication to start, but you want to work towards underlying root cause emotion. And here's the thing is that dysbiosis, that's when the gut and the microbiome is out of balance. Well, that happens because of the food that you eat and the the pollutants and the contaminants in your body. Well, typically food and contaminants in your body come from the choices that you make and you know the world's leading nutritionists and functional medicine doctors know that beliefs trump lifestyle choices or a meal plan. And so you're never going to break up with the food that's not good for you if you have an emotional attachment to it. And a lot of times we try to eat that food, even if it's you know vegan, gluten-free cookies or whatever it is, we can eat uh, the wrong food as a way to cope emotionally. And so the goal is to really understand that really a lot of times um, mental health is really the health of your body. Is your vagus nerve healthy? Is your microbiome healthy? Is your emotional somatic states healthy? And if those things are healthy, that tends to reflect as health in the brain. If those things are not healthy, that tends to reflect as an imbalance in the brain. And yes, you want to focus on brain health. But the thing is, is that mental health is really body health. And body health is emotional health and and how how traumatized you are or not. Because if if you have uh, emotional trauma that has not been worked through, you know, you could go see the best functional medicine doctors in the world and you're never going to actually change because you'll be coping and surviving, trying to cope with that trauma, no matter what food protocol or nutraceuticals or whatever they put you on. You know, you could try to drink as much butter in your coffee as you want or go vegan, but if you don't do the trauma work, then the other stuff is not really going to work. And so the main idea for this podcast is for you to understand that, you know, the mental health conditions, the chronic conditions that you're experiencing, if you are, you know, treat the symptom, but realize that it's highly likely that these are responses, appropriate responses, correct responses to the underlying dysfunctional pattern. And so you don't want to take on the diagnosis as your identity. It's just a response. And so we can start to learn how to respond differently through doing your trauma work. You know, the Claim Your Power book, Functional Life Coaching, is a great, great place to start, claimyourpowerbook.com. You can go get a therapist who specializes in not just EMDR, but also ART. EMDR is amazing. Um, but ART is uh, accelerated release that helps uh, aid the EMDR process. The Claim Your Power book is a great sort of um, companion for like an EMDR, ART therapy uh, protocol with a therapist. You know, you might want to get uh, your gut microbiome tested with a company like Viome, V-I-O-M-E. Highly recommend the Institute for Functional Medicine. So if you have a doctor um, or if you want to get a functional medicine doctor, ifm.org, you can click the find a practitioner button and uh, find a functional medicine doctor near you through IFM. But if you start to do, you know, the claim your power process, 
and working with functional life coaching. You start to do maybe some EMDR processes and ART or processes with a therapist. You start to eat better and you start to see a functional medicine doctor to address some of those underlying physical symptoms. That's how you start to restore health. And so, yes, short-term symptom treatment is important. Long-term, it's the root cause and not just the root physical cause and even more importantly, the, the root and mental and emotional trauma cause. And we all have trauma. doesn't matter um, how privileged or non-privileged you grew up. We all have trauma. It's a virus. Every human has it. And so the message of this podcast is that you are perfectly made. You don't have a disorder. You have a response. Treat the symptom. Get practitioners who can help you work towards the root cause. If you're looking for a coaching process, you know, functional life coaching is the only trauma-informed coaching process. And uh, the Claim Your Power book is a great place to start, claimyourpowerbook.com. And there's a free coaching process there where I can coach you through 40 days of that book there. But the goal here is for you to understand that you are indeed perfectly made. That is the most important thing for you to understand. You're perfectly made. Address the root cause. Get practitioners who can see you as well. There's hope for you. And you know when you do the trauma work, it's the best high-performance work you can do. It's the best uh, personal development that you can do. It's the best biohacking you can do. It's the best approach to mental health that you can do because it's really the root of everything. So you are amazing. Thank you so much uh, for checking out the podcast today. And I'll see you real soon. By the way, if you are a practitioner and you have a degree or a certification or education and you want to turn that into some financial freedom, the fastest way to do that is with my P3 immersion coming up. You can come to mastinkip.com forward slash P3, mastinkip.com forward slash P3, the fastest way to turn your education, degree or certification into financial freedom.